Cindeco, que significa Corporación de Desarrollo Piñero. Pindeco was the first company that began large-scale pineapple production in Costa Rica and is the legal name for Del Monte in Costa Rica. In the 1970s, Pindeco arrived in southern Costa Rica in a very poor town called Buenos Aires. This town is populated by indigenous people who have passed on their traditional agricultural ways to their offspring for generations. But when Pindeco arrived, everything changed. Little by little, Del Monte bought thousands and thousands of hectares of land for pineapple. And we saw more and more uh, nature, water supply was degrading. It is a problem in the region and so we are one of the piece of land here which escaped from this colonization, I would say. Costa Rica became a major producer of pineapples because Del Monte destroyed the land in Hawaii and could no longer produce there. In the 1980s, Pendeco began to buy land in Costa Rica, and by the 1990s they expanded to 14,800 acres. By the end of the 1990s, the local indigenous people started organizing against Pendeco because they were seeing the negative effects of this, such as clearing of primary forests, contamination of the water, land and air, as well as to the workers exposed to chemicals. In 2000, Pendeco expanded pineapple production to the whole country. There are now 123,500 acres of pineapples growing in Costa Rica. Despite the economic crisis, pineapple production has increased. This is a huge concern for the people of Costa Rica because Pendeco is expanding very fast. Although Costa Rica is known to be environmentally friendly, it imports more pesticides than any other country in Central America. This is because the governmental agencies in charge of pesticide regulation are complacent. The agricultural minister, the health minister, and those who regulate imports are simply ignoring existing regulations. The more the laws are ignored, the more multinational corporations take advantage of the lax regulations. For instance, there is a community where the potable water has become contaminated by Del Monte pineapple production. Instead of being forced to clean the water or penalizing Del Monte, the government has been importing clean water from elsewhere for the past three years. Although the health of the country is decreasing, those responsible to enforce the laws are not doing anything about it because pineapple production is a huge boon to the country. At this moment, it generates $600 million for the country each year, and it is growing. We have come to the conclusion that the only way the government is going to do anything is to organize the people to pressure the government. In 2000, we helped a group of people in Buenos Aires sue Pendeco. After this happened, we realized many lawsuits had not been actualized by the government, so the people organized to make public the lawsuits against Pendeco. As a result, Pendeco was forced to present a plan to reduce their agrochemical usage and replant some forests, but they did not comply and the government has not monitored it. We have won many lawsuits against pineapple producers, but the only way the government will follow through with them is to make the lawsuits public by bringing it to the media and organizing strikes. Pendeco is also known for their horrible, unsanitary working conditions. During the high season, workers are forced to work over time, or they are fired. Pendeco never gave workers the right to organize unions until the late 1990s when the workers began to demand for a union. They demanded to clean up the environment and better working conditions. They managed to form a union, but at this time it has been reduced to nearly nothing. As unions grew, Pendeco began to fire those involved in the union. When the free trade agreement, CAFTA, was signed with the U.S., those workers involved in protest against it were fired. Now these workers have filed a lawsuit against El Monte. People have been sent home for, for uh, too much chemicals in their blood because they are being tested every so often by a staff of doctors who works for Pindeco. And if the level of toxins in their blood is considered too high, then they'll be sent home for a few days. I work in the packing station. I pack the pineapple into the boxes. The normal is 48 hours per week. At the moment they pay us $1.80 an hour. You always earn more when you work on your own property. When I work for Pindeco, I make about $100, $120 a week. But on my own sugarcane field, I can make about $240. So this is almost the double. 
when you're a farmer you work six days a week. On the fields I work about six hours per day. But the sugar cane and the coffee, it's just a certain period of the year. And when you don't have sugar cane or coffee, you don't have an income. That's the problem. So when I work for Pindeco, I have income the whole year. I certainly prefer to work on the fields. It's nicer and it's my own work, it's my own field. It's really relaxing if you work your own property. I think the work where I work now is a bit boring. It's more like a prison. You're all locked up. And there are walls everywhere. You can't really get out. Well, apart from the bathroom. Or to eat. But the whole day you have to be there. I worked at Pindeco for four years. I made 600 colonas an hour, which is about $1.20. When Francella was born, we both worked at Pindeco. Her father worked in the warehouse handling agrochemicals, and I worked in the packaging facility. My work at Pindeco was putting pineapples into boxes. We used gloves, but where the gloves didn't cover, the skin was exposed. My partner had blood tests done, and they said he was okay. But I didn't have any blood tests done. People who work in the hospital say the blood tests Pindeco does are very simple. They think with those exams, you could never tell if someone had or had not chemicals in the blood. After I worked two years, Francella was born. I worked at Pindeco the whole nine months of my pregnancy and left two weeks before the baby was born. When I was six months pregnant, the company offered to do an ultrasound and they said Francella was fine. We don't know why they didn't say she didn't have arms. We don't know if they saw and didn't tell us or if they themselves didn't see. I left work for Pindeco because I had to take care of Francella. She had lots of health problems. She had allergies. She was also rebellious with the people who cared for her. She wouldn't eat or drink, so I left Pindeco when she was a year and nine months. Pindeco, no, Pindeco was not interested in talking to us. The doctors told us if we wanted to know if there was a connection between the malformations and the agrochemicals, we would have had to do tests during my pregnancy. During my pregnancy, I had an ultrasound done with the doctors who worked for Pindeco. They didn't tell me anything. They said after she was born, there was no way of telling if there was a connection to Pindeco chemicals. After she was born, I took a month and a half off of work, then went back to work. When Francella was two years old, I quit and didn't go back to Pindeco. Her spine is curved this way, so she'll have to go to see a doctor. She has been in observation for that, and it has to be corrected. It affects her posture. When we go to physical therapy, we have to take a cab because she cannot be exposed to the sun. She has sun allergies, and her skin gets irritated if we walk. <laughs> The air might be contaminated, the water might be contaminated, and the people who work at Pindeco are even more exposed. Half of the land is forest, so we decided that we should do a conservation to this part from the land and develop what we call a equilibrio between agriculture and, and forestry. Here was founded UNAPROA, but the organization which uh, is working all around Longomai. It's about 23 villages protecting water areas. We had some crisis from coffee price when sugarcane or coffee didn't bring anything because the price was below what you had to put in. 
And in these times we saw that people were started to grow more for self-sufficiency because they had nearly nothing in cash. There is a big capacity to go back to 80%, 90% autosufficiency. The times we are, are living now, maybe we will have big problems with uh, nour nourishing mankind in general. Normally we will see that all what is food will go up prices and I think it will be very important that communities have their self-sufficiency, autonomy, what is uh, living on their own products.